This week, we're at the Ironman Kalma in Sweden. We follow Ironman legacy athlete Wim Timmermans on Swedish home soil. Meet German pro Jan Raphael. And look back at Luke van Lierde's second win in Hawaii in 1999. Kalmar, a city in the southeast of Sweden, hosts the inaugural Ironman Sweden. Situated on the Baltic Sea, Kalmar is one of Sweden's oldest and most historic towns. It became a fortified city in the 17th century, and the mighty Kalmar Renaissance Castle is still the center and main tourist attraction of the town. But Kalmar is also known for its cathedral, a classicistic masterpiece, and its typical charming Swedish houses that can be found around the town center. The official Ironman premier in Kalmar is the home event for Swedish age grouper Wim Timmermans, who this year, through the Ironman Lottery and Legacy program, was selected to race the World Championships. This is an initiative that enables age groupers that have completed more than 12 Ironman races in their life and won each in 2010, 2011 and 2012 to get their taste of Hawaii. The Ironman Legacy program is a fantastic initiative for people like myself. Uh, put a lot of time and effort into the sport. It's going to be a, a great opportunity to stand on the finish line together with world champions, uh, world-class athletes, and, and finally do uh, Kona Ironman. Timmermans has completed 27 iron distance races, and in the last six years, he has committed his life to the sport. I do solid training, which could be up to from 15 to 20 hours a week, leading up to the first Ironman event of the year, which is normally in May or June. And then uh, I still keep fit during, uh, because my, my plan is to do four or five, six Ironmans last year. Like every Ironman athlete, Timmermans is supported by his family and they are proud of his achievements. But my dad, he's 47, he has a wife, he has three kids and he has a full-time job. And so to be able to accomplish this outside all of those aspect, I think that's pretty impressive. Some people do it in eight hours, some people do it in 15 or more hours. Uh, the emotion is yet the same. Uh, it's a, a feeling of fulfillment, uh, personal dedication. All the time and effort that you've put into leading up to the race is by, by finishing in, in the finish shoot will give you a very special feeling. One of the main contenders for the title is Jan Raphael from Germany and he leaves no doubt why he is in Kalmar. My goal is to win here, nothing else. I didn't come to Sweden as a tourist because I want to have a nice holiday. I can do that the week after. My greatest strength is that I'm a very balanced athlete, a good all-rounder, stable in every discipline. But compared to athletes like Andreas Böchere, I don't have his definitive strength on the bike. In a field with other top athletes like Andy Böchere and Portugal's Sergio Marquez, Rafael knows it's not all about pre-race tactics, but also the ability to react to the developments in the race. It's changed a little bit, and these days you've got to go with what's happening in the race. You can't just look at your wattage and heart rate, but you've got to be there when the heat is on. For me personally, it's time to win an Ironman again. The first Ironman victory was at my Ironman debut in Florida in 2006, and that really was a while ago. A day before the race, and it's getting busy at the bike check-in. As German pro Andy Becher arrives, he knows only too well that his main rivals for the race will be his fellow countrymen Raphael and Reichel. It's a situation in Germany that I'm very happy about. It's such a high performance level and no matter which contest you go to, you'll compete with the likes of Sebastian Kienle or Michael Reilert. If you can compete with or win against them, you know you have no trouble to go to Las Vegas or Kona, because the Germans are some of the best and they always play a part in the front. Not only German athletes like Becherer, but also Portugal's Sergio Marquez and Sweden's Jonas Jurbach are in Kalmar with a chance for a podium position. 
this will be my main focus this year since it's the first Ironman ever in Sweden and of course I have to be here. Definitely I have a chance to make a podium but to do it I will have to do a really good race and to really keep the run together. The run is of course the key to a good race in an Ironman. Also at the bike check-in, Jan Rafael together with his girlfriend Rebecca Esmuller, one of the favourites for the women's title. The situation is special, but I like it, because we can always help each other. We are both as relaxed as you can be before a race. I think I'm even a bit more relaxed, and Jan is more of the motivator, I would say. Esmüller's fellow German Dana Wagner is in Sweden with podium ambitions. At some point, I want to get on the podium at an Ironman. That's the definite goal, and it really is my big dream. It is very special to race here when it's the first uh, Ironman because it's, um, it's, I think it's a big turn, and uh, we had the Olympics where our Swedish girl Lisa Nordén placed really good, and and the uh, this sport get a lot of attention. So I think it's a, it's great to have the opportunity to be a part of it. A stunning sunrise greets the 1,400 athletes from 40 countries on race morning. And the pros and the amateurs soak up the atmosphere as they prepare their bikes and race fuel for the last time. It's really a magic moment. Everyone is very nervous. Everyone is very excited at the same time. So there is a tranquility of, uh, of anticipation of a very, very big day uh, ahead. Mentally you prepare for the swim start and first transition. Everything else just happens. And it doesn't make any sense to tactically plan too much in an Ironman that takes eight hours. Of course everyone is nervous. I think everyone's pulse is more around 100 than 60. And at some point you've had enough of being nervous and you can't wait for the start shot. As the athletes walk down to the start at Elevator Cayen, most of them are relieved that it's a water start. In the water we are divided along the start line, and of course there is a bit of pushing and shoving as well, but really it's much more relaxed. Have control of your feelings and not get too nervous. Focus on what you're going to do. Um, convince yourself you're prepared enough and that it's going to be a good day. I can really feel it. Everyone is uh, very concentrated, is in its own world, uh, making last final preparations. And I think everyone is very relieved given the, the conditions today. The athletes start in the water just outside Elevator Cayen and swim the 3.8 kilometers in a two-loop course which ends in the channel under the Engo Bridge. The final seconds tick away. The race is on. 1,400 athletes throw themselves into the 20-degree Kalma Strait. The swim is a fierce battle of hands and legs, and while the last age groupers still start their swim, a group with Swedish hopeful Jonas Durback quickly establish a lead. Durback sets the pace and powers ahead of the rest of the field. At the first boy, Durback is still in the lead, and the Swede shows his swimming pedigree. But the strong German contingent never really let him out of their sight. Supported by the large crowds, the leading pack finishes the first loop, swinging past the Elevator Cayen. It's still the same group of athletes that dominate the race. In the women's field, Germany's Rebecca Esmuller is in the lead. She swims an average of 1 minute 26 seconds per 100 meters and quickly puts some valuable time between herself and her main rivals. Swimming at a speed of 1 minute 16 per 100, Andy Becheren now takes the lead in the men's field. But it's a tight race, and the rest of the lead group is on his toes. Becher, a notoriously strong swimmer, keeps his lead down the finish straight, and he exits the water together with fellow German Horst Reichel. They are closely followed by Durbach in third, and Raphael in fourth place. As Becher and Reichel enter the tent in transition, they know that Durbach and Raphael are breathing down their necks. 
It's a tight race, and every second in transition counts. Dürbach and Reichel leave transition together, closely followed by Raphael, who is on the chase. Rebecca Esmuller is the first woman to exit the water, and she already has a lead of 1 minute 29 seconds ahead of second place Stina Molebro. Jan Raphael's girlfriend really wants a podium place in Kalmar. In the meantime, hundreds of age groupers still battle it out in the open waters of the Baltic Sea. It's a tough challenge, but 26-time Ironman distance finisher Wim Timmermans is having a strong day and exits the water in a time of 59 minutes and 18 seconds. How did it go? Yeah, it's okay. Swim's up one hour. It's okay. See you later. As he leaves for the bike course, Timmermans looks fresh and extremely motivated. It's a two-loop bike course, and the first 106-kilometer loop takes the field onto the island of Erland, with the second 74-kilometer loop on the mainland north of Kalmar. Jürbach and Reichel are first out on the bike course, but immediately get chased down by Germany's Jan Raphael, who powers ahead. It's a tight race, and soon Dorian Wagner catches up with Raphael. But chasing from behind, Anton Blokin from the Ukraine produces the fastest average speed at this point and his pace catapulting him past Germany's Dorian Wagner. But in perfect conditions and on a fast course, the field stays together. In the women's field, Rebecca Eschmüller flies along at an average speed of 37.9 km per hour. And after 39 kilometers, her strong swim and bike have her more than four minutes ahead of Dana Wagner. Knowing that her heel injury will negatively impact her run, Wagner goes all out on the bike and makes up time on the leading Esmuller. In third place, Swedish favorite Ursula Longström is staying in touch with the leaders on the bike. Far behind in fourth is Japan's Emi Sakai. It's not just the pros flying on the fast Swedish track. An age group of Wim Timmermans passes the 39 kilometer mark in just over two hours of racing. At the sharp end of the race, Dorian Wagner has pulled away from the rest of the field and now has a slim 46 second lead. Blokken leads the chase pack, which includes the likes of Sweden's Jonas Djurbak, as well as the German favorites, Jan Raphael and Andy Böcherer. Wagner is caught by the pack, and the surprising aggression of young Swede Carl Johan Danielsson sees him pull away. Speeding along at over 41 kilometers an hour, he is now in charge. The woman's race has got a lot tighter, and between kilometers 2 and 20, Esmuel has lost more than two minutes on Wagner, and then the inevitable happens, and Wagner overtakes Esmuel. Could this be the turning point of the race? Still in third position, Lundström is also making gains. Timmermans, with 40 kilometers to go, can smell transition too. I just want to finish the bike. Getting tired. It's OK. At the front of the field, Carl Johan Danielsson shows no signs of his big effort on the bike and he races into transition as the surprise leader for Sweden. After exiting the water in eighth place, he put down a phenomenal bike split and can't believe himself what is happening. I didn't expect to be in the lead, but it's fun. <laughs> Good day for sport. The Swede is on to the running track, and after 180 kilometers, he's just over two minutes ahead of Raphael and the rest of the contenders. So far, everything is going according to plan. I can't complain, but there's still a bit to be done.
With the men well into the run, the ladies' leader Dana Wagner dismounts her bike. Trailing after the swim, she records the fastest bike split and is first into transition. After 180 kilometers, Wagner enjoys an advantage of more than four minutes over new second place, Ossel Lundström. Spread out all over the course, the age groupers enjoy the Swedish countryside and Wim Timmermans arrives in transition. Being a perfectionist, he's never 100% satisfied. Yeah, not too bad, I'm struggling on a bike, but uh, I'm doing fine, I'm okay. After the break, will it be a dream Swedish win for Danielsson? Can Wagner run to victory through injury? And is Wim Timmermans on track? We are back for the marathon at the Ironman Kalmar in Sweden. The 42.2 kilometer run course heads to the north of Kalmar and the three loops lead the athletes back to the historic old town and the finish line on the main square. Surprise leader Carl Johan Danielsson flies out of transition, only too aware that the rest of the field will try their best to hunt him down. After two kilometers, he still holds a 1 minute 46 lead ahead of Raphael. But the German looks determined and very fast as he's closing down the gap to the leader. In third and fourth place, two more Germans, Dorian Wagner and Andy Becherer. Running shoulder to shoulder, they are also making up time. Despite struggling with an injured heel, Germany's Dana Wagner holds on to her lead in the women's race for the first part of the marathon. But between kilometer two and kilometer 20, her lead shrinks from more than four minutes to less than two minutes. And Swedish local Ursa Lundström is constantly making up time. In third place, Rebecca Esmüller is struggling. Will she be able to keep her podium place? For Wim Timmermans, it's a real fight now. I'm struggling, struggling a bit with my stomach, but uh, should be fine, no excuses. At the front of the race, the inevitable happened and Jan Raphael has overtaken Danielsson. Powering ahead, the German now seizes his chance as Danielsson struggles to keep up his early pace. And now the chasing pack smells their chance and third placed Andy Bercherer soon hunts down Danielsson. But Bercherer himself is caught by Hurst Reichel and Dorian Wagner. For a while, the three Germans stay together but then Wagner makes his decisive move and leaves the others behind. Up front, Raphael is in cruise control and he now holds a comfortable lead. In the women's race, Ossa Lundström is now in charge of proceedings and the 28-year-old Swede has her first Ironman victory in sight. Dana Wagner now struggles with her heel injury but it looks like second place is hers, as third place Esmüller is too far behind. Jan Raphael is on course to his first Ironman victory since 2006. Having controlled the run, his joy crossing the finish line is clearly visible. The perfect day. I don't like to talk about the perfect performance because it's difficult to define that. But I'm just so happy with my performance today.
A delighted Dorian Wagner crosses the finish line in second place. I'm very happy with the second place and of course I knew that I trained well in the last few weeks and I did expect something, but I'm just happy that it really worked out. In third place, another happy German, Horst Reichel. And in fourth place, breaking the Swedish record, the new Swedish champion, Jonas Durbach. In the final results of the inaugural Ironman Kalman Sweden, Germany owns the podium. Things just keep getting better for Sweden, and a triumphant Ossa Lundström gives Sweden its first Ironman Kalma champion. What a day. Oh my God. It's like a dream. Amazing. What an experience. Great race. Despite her heel injury, Dana Wagner fights to a valiant second. It's gigantic. The run course, especially here in town, was so much fun. In third place after a late charge, Emi Sakai from Japan. And in fourth, Rebecca Esmuller. A dream Ironman debut in Sweden with a Swedish champion. 47-year-old age group of Wim Timmermans has not far to go. His wife and daughter wait for him as he crosses the finish line to complete his 27th Ironman distance race. I had a good, uh, good race. I had a solid uh, sub one hour swim. I went very hard on the bike, but I couldn't uh, maintain. So I think I went 5.05. Uh, the run as usual was a disaster, but the public, especially Marie and Maddie, cheered me on and 10.13 uh, is okay. Yeah, he's not a real human. He's made of titanium or something. We don't know. <laughs> OK, enough already, enough already. With the iron clock fast ticking towards the 16-hour cutoff, hundreds of age groupers are still out on the course, trying to finish the toughest one-day endurance challenge in the world. In Ironman, a finish is a win. And for the first time on Swedish soil, these athletes are official Ironman finishers. For many, a long head's dream comes true. After winning the Ironman 70.3 in Mont Tremblant earlier this year, Frenchman Romain Gouillon also triumphed in his first full distance race in Quebec. Second place went to Spain's Alejandro Santa Maria and third to Matthew Russell from the US. In the women's race, Jesse Donovan beat fellow American Uli Brummer into second and Canadian Rachel Kears took third place. Kona in Hawaii is the place where Ironman legends are born. Belgium's Luc van Leerde left his mark on the Lava Rock Island when he became the first European to win the Ironman World Championship in 1996, setting the course record, which stood for 15 years. And there was more to come. Well, after 96, 97, I wasn't in Hawaii. I had an injury, I had to be operated. So I only started racing in the summer of uh, 98. So uh, I came second in 98 be uh, behind Peter Reed. But then in 99, everything went perfect. I, in the winter, I, I moved back to short distance to work on my basic speed. I was really fast again on 10Ks. And it helped me to run really well uh, throughout the long distance that year. I remember in 99, there was only one race in my whole career that before the race, I knew I was going to win. I was 100% sure. And it was a strange feeling, and that was in 1999. Uh, before going to the start, uh, half an hour before, uh, I was so sure I was going to win that race, and I won it. I dominated that race from start to finish, came out of the water with the first pack, stayed on the bike, didn't really have to push hard, 
Nobody, some people tried, but they couldn't uh, drop me on the bike and on the run. I went away straight away and uh, I got the lead after three, four kilometers and uh, I, I made a gap of seven minutes, I think. So it was a, an easy race to win. It's always easy when you win, of course, eh? but uh, it was, uh, for me, maybe my, my best race in my career in 1999. I think winning 99 is maybe more special. From further away you come back, the more special a victory is. So for me, 1999 uh, means more than uh, 96. Next week, we're at the Ironman 70.3 Talamzee in Austria. Find out if Michael Gurner and Daniel Fontana can continue their good 2012 seasons and learn about the fastest way to get through transition.